to this uh, session. And already Dreville has uh, introduced myself. I am Annapurna Borwa. I did my PhD from um, the Maharaja Sahajira University of Baroda, India. And uh, now I'm working as assistant professor at University of Petroleum and Energy Studies, Dehradun, India. A very good evening to all of you. Good evening from India. And you are a different time zone somewhere. It is uh, morning. I think in Venezuela, it is morning now. Uh, so I welcome all of you. Thank you so much for joining this session. Uh, so I would like to thank you, uh, APZ Universidad Central, the Venezuela student chapter. And let me start my presentation. Uh, we'll take questions at the end of this uh, presentation. You can write in the chat box also, and uh, a few questions you can take, uh, you can ask. Um, you can unmute your mic and you can ask after the session. So I'll be talking about geochemical methods of shale gas exploration. The basic idea behind this presentation is to understand about the shale rock, shale reservoir, mainly the geochemical technique for exploration. Hope I'm audible, right? My voice is clear? Yeah, ma'am. Okay, thank you. So this presentation will cover introduction about shale gas, geochemical techniques, how to evaluate shale gas property, geochemical property using different techniques, how to assess the shale rock will generate hydrocarbon or not. If it, is, it will generate hydrocarbon, then what type of hydrocarbon? It will generate oil or gas. Then how much maturity is uh, present in the shale? Then biomarker study. Then geochemical parameter estimation using well locks. I'll be discussing this point, uh, very little bit about this point. Then I will use some case study to show you how the integration of geochemical, petrophysical, and reservoir data can help to identify uh, the hydrocarbon, uh, the shale gas exploration zone, as well as how to estimate the reserve. So as you know, the term unconventional refers to the reservoir that are generally difficult to develop, which require large stimulation treatment and enhanced recovery techniques in order to produce and recover economic volume of hydrocarbon. In this image, this is the, this is the hydrocarbon resource triangle. As you progress from the conventional reservoir zone at the top to the bottom, towards the unconventional resource zone, the amount of hydrocarbon resource will increase, but these are the uh, reservoirs which are difficult to develop. So conventional reservoirs are small volume, they are easy to develop, and unconventional reservoirs are large in volume, but they are difficult to develop. So you require improved technology, which will take more price, some example of unconventional reservoirs like tight gas, tight oil, low permeable oil, shale gas, heavy oil, coal bed, methane gas, hydrate, oil shells, etc. But these resources have very great uh, abundance. Uh, they are in immense quantity. If you see the world hydrocarbon resource, then you can see 7% um, hydrocarbon Energy is uh, energy demand is meeting by tight gas. Sixteen percent is by shale. Twelve percent is by coal bed methane. Fifteen percent is by kerosene shale, bituminous shale. Then nineteen percent is by heavy oil. And uh, this is a resource diagram. And eight percent we have conventional gas. So we have huge volume of unconventional reservoirs. Only uh, there are some challenges. So we should understand these reservoirs adequately so that we can design and we can apply effective technology to extract those hydrocarbon commercially. Uh, 
unlike the conventional hydrocarbon reservoirs in case of conventional we require cap uh, we require source rock where hydrocarbon will generate then hydrocarbon will migrate to the uh, reservoir rock then there is required one cap rock which will uh, which will trap or entrap uh, which will be acting as the seal so that hydrocarbon will not migrate from the reservoir to uh, it will not escape and we require particular reservoir trap also the trap may be anticline it, there may be fault or that, you know, there may be some saldome so all of you know there are reservoir traps stratigraphic traps and combination of both so we require particular reservoir trap for the conventional reservoirs but, but in case of shale gas reservoirs we do not require any typical petroleum system we do not require any reservoir trap hydrocarbon can accumulate throughout the rock layer but the shales are porous uh, shales are porous and impermeable most of the pores are isolated so to connect the pores we require hydrofracturing advanced technology like hydrofracturing and as you know shale layers are thin compared to the sandstone uh, actually shale layers are not thin shale formations are thick but to, uh, the brittle shale which are favorable for uh, shale gas exploration those layers are very thin and we have to identify the thin shale faces for uh, sweet spot identification then the thin layer to interact with the thin layer and to connect with large uh, amount of aerial extent it requires high, uh, horizontal drilling and to connect the isolated pores it requires hydrofracturing so horizontal drilling and hydrofracturing these are the these are the two key factors for successful shale gas exploration and exploitation why shale gas is so important what is the big deal with shale gas so you can see the shale gas revolution uh, it was started in 2010 here the red color is indicating tight gas uh, purple color is coal bed methane and you can see the yellow color which is um, having uh, which demand is increasing and the production is also increasing after 2010 you can see the rapid increase of production of shale gas total production is in, in, uh, increasing rapidly and it is um, anyways it is contributing almost 20 percent of its natural and uh, gas demand from the shale gas reservoirs. So this is the world uh, shale gas map. The first commercial shale gas production was started in, uh, in 1821. It was from Devonian shale of Appalachian Basin, which was economically marginal. But after the great economic success of Barnett Shale Prey in Texas, the interest for shale gas exploration was uh, increased it was spread all over the world uh, in canada europe asia australia so us uh, as per the us energy information administration it projects that us will produce 50 percent of its natural gas uh, requirement from unconventional resources by 2030 and with the current technology it was as it was projected that uh, the shale gas in us is enough to meet the united states gas need for the next 90 years so here you can see china is having the highest resource followed by usa and you can see we have tremendous prospect of unconventional resources in india also 63 is the recoverable hydrocarbon uh, shale gas uh, reserve but this value will increase if we uh, do adequate study for all the sedimentary basins this value may increase in 2000 shale gas one percent of u.s natural gas uh, demand was provide was uh, fulfilled by shale gas uh, reservoirs by 2010 it was 20 percent and it is expected that 46 percent of natural gas demand will be fulfilled by shale gas by 2035 mm -hmm. and in india also we have estimated 290 trillion cubic feet uh, risk shale gas in place and out of that 63 is technically recoverable now although we know we have shale gas prospects in 
uh, most of the basin sedimentary basins where there are shales but these shales are unique in nature they are heterogeneous and all shale requires unique uh, unique uh, technology for commercial shale gas exploration so that is why we should have adequate knowledge about the shale because every reservoir each reservoir shale properties are different in fact within the same formation at different depth level you may get different shale characters there may be mineralogy variation there may be geochemical property variation and there may be reservoir property variation porosity permeability variation geomechanical property variation so you should understand you should know what are the technology integrated technology is required to understand the shale rock property adequately so this the shale is shale gas is the in situ hydrocarbon gas present in organic rich fine grain shale shale act both source rock reservoir rock for the gas but the shale should have minimum two weight percent of total organic content it may be thermally matured or it may be mature or it may be at post mature zone based on the organic matter quality and quantity it will produce uh, gas or oil it may be thermogenic biogenic and mixture of both but in a shale reservoir the, uh, the gas may be present in three forms it may be free gas in the pore porous space in the micro fractures it may be adsorbed gas on a rock surface rock matrix and it may be dissolved gas shale mineralogy uh, shale is mainly composed of organic matter then uh, it uh, it may be it uh, it is uh, mainly composed of clay minerals such as illite kaolinite smectite other minerals like silica mineral uh, mineral quartz orthoclase feldspar uh, then carbonate minerals iron minerals uh, sulfide mineral and there may be presence of heavy mineral in the shales so based on their mineral variation you will get different type of shales and the mineral con the component of the shale constituent of the shale will affect the color of the shell so you will get different color of shells sometimes you can see black shells sometimes you will shed uh, you will see gray shells those shells indicate that black shell is generally having high amount of organic content compared to the gray shells and some color also indicate presence of uh, some particular mineral so color is basically uh, the composition of it is uh, the Uh, basically the difference uh, in the state of oxidation of iron iron mineral so color in the shell is depend on presence of organic matter and other mineral material a minor amount of organic matter and iron can significantly alter the color of the shell black color shell always indicate presence of organic matters it indicates an oxygen deficient environment of shell deposition comparatively gray shells contain a small amount of organic matter shells that are deposited in oxygen rich environment they often shows uh, some iron oxides iron hydroxide minerals such as hematite geotite limonite uh, and this presence of hematite geotite uh, geotite limonite this uh, can indicate uh, the red color brown color yellow colors then presence of hematite uh, uh, give the red color limonite can give yellow color so like that based on the, uh, the presence of minerals you can get variation in color and they also indicate some particular uh, they also indicate particular depositional environment of the shell these are the examples these images are from barnet shell you can see color variation from the same shell formation how much uh, what are the different color means how much variation in color you can see first one is gray color second one is black color and third one is uh, it is uh, light uh, it is almost brown color and the, the this one is uh, barnet shell is sub surface pore sample so it is very dark in color this is black color this color indicates presence of uh, high amount of organic matter and actually these are some outcrop uh, samples outcrop sections so there may be some weathering effect also so which may uh, alter the color and this image is entering shell almost yellow color 
So all these color variations are presence of a specific uh, mineral content and mineral material. So they indicate, uh, you can get some basic idea from their color. If it is highly rich in organic content, it will show black color. But uh, you can get only preliminary information for confirmation for uh, specific geology, you know, geochemical uh, investigation you have to do. And we will discuss what are the geochemical investigations are required to understand the shale will produce hydrocarbon, it will produce oil or gas, uh, how much shale gas will it will produce that you uh, will discuss. So as you know, there are two ways of organic matter conversion, light organic molecular uh, more matters convert, it can convert directly at shallow depth, it can generate biogenic gases, bacteria can uh, produce biogenic gases, but the lipid, protein, and carbohydrate parts of animal body plants can convert into uh, different organic matter, like um, dif uh, different uh, stages. Kerosene at almost 50 degrees Celsius, it can convert into then bitumen, and at a particular temperature range, it will get maturity, and that particular range, it can produce either oil or gas. So what type of hydrocarbon it will produce? It will produce oil or gas or both. That will depend on the organic matter quality. Where from, what is the source of the organic matter? What is the component of the organic matter? Uh, for example, if it is coming from algae, then it will produce oil. If it is coming from wood, terrestrial plant, then it will produce gas. So based on their source, these organic matters are divided into different types. Kerosenes are divided into different types. However, the three main uh, factor that controls the uh, gas or oil generation in shale, these are the presence of organic matter quantity. You should, for conventional hydrocarbon, you should have minimum 0.5% total organic content. But for the unconventional, you should have minimum 2%, 2 percent, 2 weight percent total organic carbon content. The second one is type of organic matter. As I told you, kerosene type one, we'll discuss in detail what type of kerosene can produce what type of organic matter. Then the third point is thermal maturity. It should require proper thermal maturity. Uh, in this image also, you can see first oil will generate and as the temperature will increase, as the subsurface depth will increase, the source rock will undergo more depth, then it will get into the more uh, geothermal gradient at higher temperature, the oil can crack into uh, gas. So these are the different maturity zone. Uh, you can see at initial stage, you will get biogenic gas, biogenic methane up to 50 degrees Celsius, that is called diogenesis stage. Then you will get mature stage where it will produce oil, then the oil will convert into gas. But you have to see, uh, these are the ranges of maturity. There are different uh, indicators. You can, there are different techniques to calculate the maturity, vitrinite reflectance, thermal alteration index, fluorescence, then Lopatin's time temperature index. These are the maturity indicator. And you can find out the maturity level uh, by analyzing, using this technology, you can analyze your samples and you can get different maturity level. You can find out at what maturity zone it is present. And if the kerosene type is one, it, if it is coming from algae, then it will produce oil. If it is two, it will produce oil and little amount of gas. If it is kerosene type three, it will produce only gas because this is coming from terrestrial uh, plant wood. So based on that, you can find out what type of uh, hydrocarbon it will produce. So what is ex exactly, uh, means how the shell um, will act as source rock as well as reservoir rock. It was already known that shale is, a, shale is the primary source rock. Generally in shales, the shale is composed of total organic carbon content, then organic matter solid, uh, it is the water and solid matter that is kerosene. Then solid matter as with increasing time, temperature and maturity, the solid matter will convert it into oil and there will be little amount of organic matter. And at a time, it will pro it will uh, the oil will convert into gas. So in the uh, shale, there will be oil, uh, gas, and organic matter. 
so when the shale will get matured the solid part will convert it into liquid as well as gas so volume will increase and that volume will exert pressure on the rock surface that pressure will create some micro fractures which will help for diffusion of the hydrocarbon from the source rock to reservoir rock but in some cases there may not be micro fracture or there may be limited micro fractures where the source rock becomes reservoir rock when the micro fractures fail to provide hydrocarbon escape route so when there will be more hydrocarbon uh, generation than the uh, available micro fracture then the hydrocarbon will remain entrapped in the shale rock then the shale will act as the reservoir rock for a shale source rock to become a reservoir the rate of generation must exceed the rate of leakage with insufficient micro fracturing to produce a continuous hydrocarbon escape route out of the shale increasing maturity can frack the generated oil into gas so if it is kerosene type 1 or 2 it will produce oil but with increasing time and maturity it can crack into gas so how the maturity and increasing temperature can affect in uh, kerosene structure as i told you there are different three types of i uh, mean three types uh, four types of kerosene types and type 1 type 2 type 3 can produce oil and gas four can produce inert gas only so micro structure of kerosene also evolves during the maturation process thermal maturation process in organic petrography different components of uh, kerosene can be identified by microscopic investigation and uh, they are known as measurers then the classification this measurable classification was actually earlier developed for coal and now it is used for organic rich shales also so at high maturity it increased the aromaticity and it developed some kerosene hosted pores so uh, this evolution of kerosene uh, in internal structure of the kerosene also help in developing some pores which can hold organic which can hold the gas Uh, so i'll show you scanning electron microscopy where you can see the organic matter hosted pores also now how to uh, assess the source rock potential the shale rock potential total organic uh, i have already told you our three, uh, we have to evaluate mainly three parameters one is total organic carbon content second one is maturity third one is type of organic matter and based on that we can calculate how much hydrocarbon will be generated in the by the shale so for the uh, toc analysis you can use lipo toc analyzer uh, this uh, this is this instrument will give you uh, total toc value in percentage so for this instrument for this experiment you have to ground your sample and you have to remove the carbonate part by acid treatment then you have to combust the sample in presence of excess oxygen in high temperature then all the organic carbon will be converted into co2 and you have to trap the the system will trap the co2 and then it will uh, release to a detector and that volume will be calculated and it will uh, you can calculate the toc value and toc also you can calculate uh, you can analyze using the rock eval pyrolysis rock eval pyrolysis this is one worldwide used mostly uh, most widely used pyrolysis technique and it is used uh, by all the industries petroleum industries here the pyrolysis is the decomposition of organic matter by heating in absence of oxygen and this is used to measure richness maturity of potential source rock uh, this is the rock eval pyrolysis 6 and here some other uh some are um, my students are working in the lab or they are preparing the samples for uh, to sending in different laboratories uh so this i'll tell you what is the working principle of this uh, rock eval pyrolysis technique in this technique uh, the sample is heated in absence of oxygen with increasing temperature where here con temperature will in increase continually uh 6 degree celsius per minute and with increasing this temperature the source rock will start the shale will start releasing the hydrocarbon first it will release the volatile or existing hydrocarbon gas free gas that is known as s1 and the secondly after getting more heat at high temperature 
it will start pyrolyzing the kerosene. It, it will start pyrolyzing the uh, hydrocarbon and you will get hydrocarbon, uh, released hydrocarbon that is known as S2. And after that, it will release CO2, which will be trapped. So S1, S2, S3, the, these are the uh, parameters which we can get from rockable pyrolysis. S1 is the free hydrocarbon release, S2 is the pyrolyzed hydrocarbon release, and S3 is the CO2 release. And the particular temperature at which uh, the source rock will release maximum amount of hydrocarbon, that temperature is known as T max. So using the raw cable uh, pyrolysis, you can get four, these four parameters, S1, S2, S3, and T max. And based on these three parami uh, four parameters, we can calculate hydrogen index, oxygen index, and ultimately we can analyze what type of kerosene is present, what, uh, I mean, we can as assess the source of potential, means hydrocarbon generation potential. Then, here, Tmax, it is uh, the temperature at which maximum hydrocarbon generates. Then production index, we can calculate using S1 and S2 value, that is S1 by S1 plus S2. It is also called transformation ratio, which increasing care maturity, kerosene is converted into bitumen and migration of hydrocarbon into um, and out of rocks complicated the pictures. Uh, so. So Tmax is also used as maturity indicator as higher the Tmax value indicate higher the maturity. There are specific range of Tmax based on which we can find out what is the maturity range. Then one widely used technique is vitrinite reflectance. Generally it was used for coal and nowadays it is also used for uh, organic rich, kerosene rich shells. So in this technique, you have to isolate the kerosene from rest of the rock matrix with hydrochloric acid, hydrochloric acid, then using some embedded kerosene particles in epoxy and polished, you have to polish them. Then uh, it will give uh, some incident beam the reflection. As the maturity will increase, the reflection capacity, reflection property of the vitrinite, uh, vitrinite is a component of organic matter, and that vitrinite reflectance property will increase. So we'll get more reflection. So based on that, we can identify it is highly matured shell or it, organic matter is highly matured or it is immature that we can identify based on the reflections under UV light. So these are the ranges. Uh, vitrinite reflectance value will be less than 0.6 percentage. If it is immature, then Tmax value will be less than 430. And for the gas generation window, we will get we should have more than 1.2 vitrinite reflectance, more than 460 Tmax, and production index should be more than 0.25. Another maturity indicator is spore coloration index. Here you can see variation of color in different spores. Spores and pollens are the component of plant, and you can get it uh, in the part in the organic matter. So as the um, thermal maturity will increase, as the spores and pollen will get more heat, then it, it color will alter, color will change. So dark color indicate higher maturity and light color indicate less maturity. This is van Crevelin diagram and using the van Crevelin diagram, this is one standard diagram and you can find out what type of kerosene is present in the rock. So here using hydrogen index and oxygen index, you can draw the Van Crevelin diagram. This is one example from Marcella shell and Utica shell. So here you can see Marcella shell is having both organic matter type 1, 2 and it is also having organic matter type 3 and it is going to have type 4 also which will produce nothing, inert gas only. But uh, this Utica shell is mostly type 2 and type 3. So you can identify what type of kerosene is here. So type one is marshallus will produce oil and type three part will produce gas. And this hydrogen index and oxygen index, you can calculate using the pyrolysis generated parameter that is S2 in, uh, into TOC, uh, S2 divided by TOC into 100. Then oxygen index, you can calculate from S2 and TOC. So this, S1, S2, S3. 
S2 and S3 here, they, uh, these are derived from rock eval pyrolysis and TOC also you can derive from rock eval pyrolysis or using LICO TOC uh, analyzer. And using this parameter, you can calculate hydrogen index and oxygen index. Hydrogen oxygen ratios uh, control the type of organic uh, type of hydrocarbon. Generally, in case of oil producing hydrocarbon, you will get more amount of hydrogen atom compared to the gas. Uh, gas. So based on the hydrogen index and oxygen index, you can find out what type of organic matter is there. Ultimately, what type of hydrocarbon will produce by the shale. So here, this is one another van prevalent diagram, modified van prevalent diagram here. Uh, Maturity, this is hydrogen index versus T max. These parameters we have uh, we derived from rock eval pyrolysis and using this, uh, using this uh, standard van prevalent diagram, you can find out uh, what type of shale is present. This is, in during, this is in the mature stage. This is in the post mature stage. So if uh, source rock is in the post mature stage, then it will produce gas but if it is kerosene type 3 then it will produce in the mature stage also it will produce gas then another factor is biomarkers biomarker uh, these are the component of organic uh, uh, these are the component of organic matter and biomarkers can help you uh, to determine the ma maturity as well as it can help you to determine the depositional environment of the uh, shell. So generally, alkanes, isoprenoid, piston, phyton, these are the uh, biomarkers. And you can calculate carbon preference index using these biomarker ratios. And based on their ratio, you can identify what type of depositional environment, means uh, in what type of depositional environment the shale was deposited. It is coming from marine environment or it is coming from terrestrial environment that you can find out. So if uh, this is the equation for carbon preference index, this is the equation for carbon preference index. And I'll give you this PPT uh, and you can get uh, this equation from here. And the CPI value, if it is greater than one, it indicates that it is coming from marine source rock. If it is less than one, it indicates that it is coming from terrestrial to liquid source rock. Again, then piston phyton ratio also indicate, uh, so it some, uh, gives some uh, information. Uh, it indicates redox condition. If its uh, ratio is less than one, then it indicates it is anoxic condition. And if it is greater than one, if piston phyton ratio is greater than one, then it indicates that it is um, derived from oxic environment. So based on that, we can get information about the source of its depositional environment. Then geochemical log. Uh, as the S1, S2, S3, this value you can derive from rockable pyrolysis data then this value you can uh, you can plot with respect to depth vertical uh, vertical distribution of uh, this value for geochemical parameter this is uh, with respect to depth this is called geochemical log so geochemical log uh, this is actually the elemental concentration from which the geochemistry of the formation can be derived and the first geochemical log was run in 1980s, 85, I think. So basically the geochemical parameters like POC, hydrogen index, uh, then geochemistry derived, uh, then rockable pyrolysis derived parameters S1, S2, Tmax. So if you uh, display with respect to depth, this is called geochemical log. And first example is from Eagle Ford shell. This is the geochemical TOC log for Eagle Ford shell. Hydrogen index, um, hydrogen index log, then piston phyton ratio log. So here you can see what are the zones. These are the zones with high TOC. Then here high hydrogen index, high hydrogen index, but high hydrogen index indicates presence of oil only, not gas. And the second one, this is this is 
uh, one example from Cambay Basin. This is for Tarapur shale. This is also oil producing zone only. Now based on the TOC value, TOC may be derived from uh, lab based core analysis. You, you, know, you can derive it from TOC analyzer or rocky well pyrolysis. So based on the TOC value, you can prepare the contour map. And this is first one is one example from Cambay shale, India, which is present in Gujarat. Uh, here, Cambe shale is uh, uh, in, is one of the prospective uh, shale gas candidate for um, uh, future shale gas exploration. And these are the zone you can see. Actually, these are the zone with high Cambe shale thickness. Here we have high Cambe shale thickness, and these are the zone of depression. Depth is very high, and they are at uh, highly mature zone post we uh, post mature zone. And shales which are present uh, uh, in the gas window zone, they are capable to generate shale gas in this particular uh, basin. Generally, the upper part of younger Cambe shale, which is pro prospective for shale oil, and the older Cambe shale, which is present at highest depth um, in the, uh, especially in the Jumbo Sarvaroj uh, zone, those are prospective for shale gas exploration. Then the right side you can see this is uh, one example from Eagle Ford Shell. Okay. Eagle Ford Shell and these uh, other these red dots are the indicating the wells where wells are present and TOC is taken from those wells. And this TOC actually there is only one well where core data is available and those core, that particular well core data, rockable pyrosis TOC is integrated with, uh, uh, that is used for uh, geochemical uh, well log data. Using the density log and resistivity log, they have derived the TOC value for all the well in this field. And this is, uh, they generate the TOC map. So these are the highest TOC, uh, the highest organic matter bearing zone. And these TOC values are derived from uh, using derived using resistivity log as well as density log. Now, how you can use uh, the logs to calculate uh, to estimate the geochemical parameters? Uh, especially well log, uh, especially core data are available only for the exploratory wells for in case of shale gas because source rocks are present uh, below the reservoir rock. Conventional wells are drilled up to reservoir rocks only. So very few wells are drilled up to the basement. So it is difficult to get core data for many wells. And there may be limited well where uh, core data are available. And it is also cost effective to analyze in the laboratory. So using the well logs also, you can calculate uh, uh, TOC data. You can estimate the geochemical parameters, but only the constant is you should have at least one well uh, core where to integrate to validate your result, how much, uh, how much error is coming um, in this, this case. So this first one is example from Woodford Shale where TOC is calculated using the PESIS method. This is the equation, how to calculate total organic content using the PESIS log, using log delta log R, you can calculate the TOC. This delta log R is the, uh, the displays, this is the difference Suppose you have uh, resistivity log and gamma log that also you can use. You have to overlay these two logs. And after overlaying, you have to find out the baseline. So here you can put the baseline value and RT value at the particular depth where you want to calculate the TOC. That value of uh, RT, you have the uh, delta log, you have to find out and then uh, that you have to put here. RT value you have to put here. here then you will get the delta log r value. And based on this delta log, uh, this delta log r value, you have to put here in this equation, in PESIS equation. And this is LOM, level of maturity. This value you have to put here. Then based on this, you can calculate the TOC. And as the log will be resistivity, gamma density, this log will be present for most, uh, available for most of the well in a field. So you can calculate, you can create the TOC log. So in this case, you can see this is the TOC log uh, derived from the well log data. So you can use well log data to estimate the geochemical parameters also.
generally pressing method smoker is metal these are the um, old method but uh, still these are considered a standard method and nowadays uh, researchers have developed different modified method to you calculate uh, toc using uh, this um, uh, logs so this is one case study from india ranigans field and this field is uh, one of the coal producing field highest coal producing field and this is well known for coal reserves and this shell is considered as one of the shell gas prospective field in india and here the shells are permian shells there are three formations uh, barakar barren major and ranigans formation barakar and uh, ranigans these are having coal layers also and from where the coals are extracting commercially and the, there is one barren major formation in between the barakar and ranigans formation which is having a thick shell and the total organic content uh, is also very high it is also high and it uh, it is uh, considered as a uh, good uh, prospect for hydrocarbon exploration and this study was uh, carried out for barren major shells so here you can see the van prevalent diagram rock eval pyrolysis of permian shells of ranigans bill for the barren major shells you can see and these samples are in mainly uh, in the oil window zone and in the gas window zone but you can see the kerosene type this is kerosene type 3 so it will produce kerosene type 3 can produce gas and as it is in oil window zone and gas window zone it will produce gas this uh, second image you can see hydrogen index versus oxygen index here also you can see the type and all the samples are kerosene type 3 and it indicates that uh, this uh, this shell <coughs> now this shell is um, the, the organic matter in this shell is coming from terrestrial plants, maybe woods. Okay, so it indicates may possibility of lacustrine environment also. Then, based on integrated XRD studies, mineral uh, matters were identified, and this shell is having um, good amount of silicate minerals. Quartz amount is very high. It, it is having more than fifty percent uh, quartz amount. Clays are mainly, uh, here clays are mainly elite, little amount of chlorides are present here and very negligible amount of chloride uh, are present, uh, sorry, kaolinite are present here. <coughs> so as uh, the elites are brittle in nature compared to other clays, so and here quartz percentage is also very high and this cell is compatible for favorable for hydrofracturing also and based on integrated properties the integrated studies uh, four lithophases were identified for these shells silty shells which is having more than 50 percent quartz content and silica content carbonaceous shell which is having uh, more than 10 percent organic content then clay stone actually in barren major shells there are iron iron stone iron layers band iron bands Sometime we can see the nodules, iron nodules also. In the last image, you can see. In this image, you can see these are the iron nodules. In this uh, scanning electron microscopy, you can see. And here also iron flex. You can see the iron in the petrographic sections also. So this is classified as iron stone shell. And clay stone, there are uh, clay stones here. Uh, based on the clay, uh, this uh, mineral quantity, it is... Uh, classified as clay stone. So four different phases were classified for these uh, shells and this carbon is silty shell and carbonaceous shell. These two phases are considered as favorable for hydrofracturing. These are the pore system in barren major shells. There are uh, intergranular pores, intragranular pores. Here you can see uh, this is chloride mineral and within the chloride mineral pores are developing here organic pores are associated with organic matter here pore is, is associated with chloride clay these are the elite you can see elite clay so here you can see the diagenesis effect uh, this phosphor is uh, um, this uh, grains are covered with clay matrix and it is trying to convert into uh, silicate minerals are trying to convert into clay 
So sometime uh, you can see it is developing porosity and sometime you can see some diagenesis uh, factors are reducing the porosity. So it is very important to understand the pore system also. And why I am showing with, uh, yes, um, in, you know, integrating with uh, this um, geochemical study because organic matters, as I told you earlier, kerosene with respect to thermal maturity, it can host some uh, pores also. So as the, the organic matter will get more temperature, it will get more uh, maturity, then there will be some pore development in the kerosene microstructure. And that microstructure can hold uh, hydrocarbon also. Here you can see some organic matter hosted pores, and here pore is developing due to dissolution of organic matter. Microfractures you can identify using the scanning electron microscopy. So this is very important to uh, design your well uh, hydraulic fracturing because uh, based on the orientation of microfractures only you will design your uh, well. It will be vertical or horizontal. Then microcomputer tomography. This is one image uh, from microcomputer tomography, and I'm not discussing in detail about the tomography because uh, here I'm discussing only geochemical part. So using the microcomputer tomography, you can get internal structure of the pore and you can see, as we believe that uh, pores in the shells are isolated, but here you can see how they are forming network. They are sometimes, in some parts, there may be networking, there may be effective pores, but they are very uh, thin pores. They're at nano level, they're at micro level, which are not, uh, resolve using the conventional technique. So you have to apply advanced technique like tomography, microcomputer tomography, uh, FE scanning electron microscopy so that you can visualize the micro to nanopores. Then adsorption study is required because uh, gas in the shell may be present as adsorbed states and it may be present as uh, um, a free gas. So how much adsorbed gas is present and uh, how much, uh, what about the pore size distribution? That information you can get from the BET analysis. And here I'm showing you for different uh, shale phases for carbonaceous silty shale and for different shale phases, adsorbed gas was analyzed and it was found that uh, the adsorbed gas amount is high uh, in case of carbonaceous shale and it is also high in case of clay rich shales. So generally organic matter provide uh, more uh, white uh, surface area and clay minerals also provide more surface area, white surface area to get adsorbed the methane molecule on its surface. So here in this study, we found that carbonaceous shales was uh, uh, creating more uh, space for the adsorbed methane molecule. So integrated study is required for shale reservoir evaluation. Here the gas flow, maybe diffusion, adsorption and desorption stage. There may be different flows like viscous flow, nutrient flow, molecular diffusion flow. So to analyze all these things, to understand the flow system in the shale, it is very important to integrate all the studies like micro studies using scanning electron microscopy, microcomputer tomography, then the transmission electron microscopy. So based on integrating all these studies, you can create the stochastic uh, model and you can create the flow model and you can understand the gas flow in the shales. And these uh, shales, mainly they follow all the, um, in the study shale, it was found that they are follow, uh, following all these flows like viscous, nutrient and molecular diffusion. And uh, for this, um, study area, reserve estimation was done. This, uh, there are several equations for reserve estimation in shale gas with shale reservoirs. Uh, we use this general formula. This is one general formula and um, uh, the overall estimation uh, for this area, for the study area was found that it has uh, 3.63 TCF um, shale gas resource in barren measure shale, then 1.47 TCF for Barakar shales. This is one comparison of Barnett shale, geochemical parameters, uh, Barnett shale, Hensville shale, Marshall shale, Eagle Force shales on river shales. 
and TOC, it should have minimum 2% TOC content and all these shales are comparable. And uh, the study area, Ranigan's field, this shale is comparable to Antrim shell and New Albany shell because in this, uh, this, uh, this field, uh, in this, uh, this common shales in Damodar Basin, in Ranigan's field, they are at very shallow depth. Uh, so due to rifting the shales, are, although they are um, older age, but they are at shallow depth and uh, their property, all the properties like thickness, depth, mineral content, organic matter content, porosity value, permeability value, all these properties are comparable to Antrim shell and New Albany shell, which are commercially producing in uh, US. So I would like to conclude my presentation. Uh, most of the shells are heterogeneous and their microstructures are influenced by organic matter, thermal maturity, diagenesis, etc. And brittle nature of shales are susceptible for hydrofracturing. So these uh, shales, although we have shales uh, in most of the country, uh, we are at uh, research phase in India also. We are at, uh, we have not uh, explored commercially, uh, maybe in future, near future, shale gas exploration will be carried out, only pilot projects have done. Uh, so this research require, as we have tremendous prospect, future prospect of unconventional reservoirs. So industry, academia, research integration is very important for this. And I always encourage students for uh, researchers for unconventional hydrocarbon resource uh, studies because we have lots of prospect we have, uh, so we should go for future exploration of this. Uh, so students interest and in, uh, collaboration of industry academia these are the very important things so worldwide networking also important for this so thank you very much thank you dr Mora, for your time for bringing us this great lecture i really enjoyed it uh, it was so helpful to understand uh, in a better way how the the matter and uh, how the evolution in the geochemical uh, properties in a conventional uh, reservoir. It was very, very helpful. Thank you so much in, in the name of the AAPG Central University of Venezuela and well um, in the Venezuelan community. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I think uh, we can begin the, the, the Q&A session uh, yes. if, if you want. Yes. yes. Uh, do you prefer that I read the, the questions uh, I, or do you I'll want to write, read them? I will I'll write the questions. Oh, sorry, I'll read the questions. Okay. Um, first of all, thank you very much for your uh, for listening to my presentation. Hope uh, it was useful. Um, actually, there is time constant, so I, uh, I complete it within a very uh, limited time. So, first question. Uh, some Van Krebelen diagram also considered type 4. What are your views regarding this? Yes, uh, because um, uh, some shales, though there are, I have given some examples from Woodford shales, uh, then Marshall shales, and from my study area, Ranigan shale, Indian shales, uh, and we have done study for Cambay shales also. So if you see all these basins, though they have uh, commercial uh, feasibility, uh, the shales, are from different origin. So they are maybe type one, type two, type three. And some shells may not be um, you know, capable to produce oil or gas. They are maybe um, you know, capable to produce inert gas only. So they, if the hydrogen index is less than 50, then they will be un undergo, they will undergo kerosene type four. So that is why it is important to mark, in, mark the kerosene type 4 also in the Van Krevelen diagram. Generally, the original Van Krevelen diagram, it, uh, it, have, it has the kerosene type 4. Uh, so, Vishal Saha, hope I, I could answer your question. Uh, yeah, type 4 should, in, you, you can, uh, you should, uh, uh, consider in the Van Krevelen diagram because not necessarily all the samples will uh, all the samples are capable to produce oil or gas. It may be having less kerosene type, sorry, less hydrogen index, less than 50, so which will produce inert gas only. Uh, generally, uh, sometime uh, due to 
uh, you know s2 value is uh, uh, as hydrogen index is calculated from uh, s2 by T toc into 100 so if uh, the s2 value will be uh, high then you will get uh, s2 value will be low then you will get less hydrogen index so you have to mark what is the type so to understand the types you should know, mark the kerosene type four uh, then uh, the, uh, dr james peter uh, he asked uh, the question when jc had drilled a number of wells for shale gas exploration please elaborate results if possible and why did ONGC call off its uh, shale gas sg is uh, you are meaning the shale gas right yeah, shale gas in Cambay Basin. Uh, yes, uh, sir. Uh, what is your question? Uh, means, uh, you, uh, what is the status that you want to know? Yeah, that's that's what I would. Uh, actually, uh, there were pilot. As per my knowledge, uh, they drilled pilot wells in the Cambay Basin, uh, and based on the commercial viability, uh, there was not progress in those wells. Uh, whatever I my understanding based on my knowledge, uh, uh, the MOPNG uh, team has calculated. Um, the, they have they suggested for uh, the present is so they are not uh, exploring commercially. But in future, the, there are some prospective zone in Cambay Basin also, and uh, the permanent shales in India. These those are actually more prospective, more viable because they are at shallow depth. And they are Permian shales, higher maturity, which are comparable to U.S. shales. Uh, then Cambay shale is uh, thickness is high. It is transgressive shale. Thickness is high. Or marine shales, so organic content is also good. But comparatively, organic content is more in case of uh, uh, in case of Permian shales. But the main challenge is in Cambay shale is uh, depth is very high and the clay type. Clay type is mainly kaolinite in case of Cambay shale. For younger Cambay shale, there are smectite also. And for older Cambay shale, most of the clay uh, clays are kaolinite and there are smectites also. So there are some challenges in clay types or clay also. Uh, so based on all these challenges, then hydrofracturing is always a challenging in case of shales, uh, that water disposal issues. Then the main factor is commercial prospect. Based on that, uh, I think presently there are not any uh, shale gas commercial exploration is going on. But future, there may be some innovative ideas, and uh, we should work on that so that we can um, we can reduce those uh, challenges and we can uh, go for shale gas production. Because already these shales are comparable to U U.S. shales, which are already producing. So definitely we should go for uh, shale gas exploration, only we have to understand our challenges. Okay, are the samples from only barren measures? Yes, uh, the rockable studies are carried out uh, from here from, uh, I have shown for barren measures only, but I have uh, studied for Rani Guns, barren measure and Barakar formations also. So I, uh, if you want to ask something, uh, some parameters, no, no, it's, then... it's, it's okay. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. So Barakar shells are this, mostly. This, this comes to <laughs> my second question. Yes, Barakar uh, are more. You, major. you showed the Barakars having lesser okay. resolve okay. than yeah. barren measures, although Barakars yeah. are more mature. Yes. Uh, reasons. Uh, yeah. Elaborate. So Barakar formation, Barakar formation at the. Uh, shallow depth of Barakar formation, top part of the Barakar formation may be prospective. They are at uh, mature stage, but if you study the clay minerals, they are, chlor uh, I found most of the clays are chloride, chlorito chloritoid, so at higher depth, barren measure cells are almost going to metamorphose, means highly matured. So at that stage, it is very uh, much, uh, much uh, chance of escape of all those gases. It is uh, very highly matured at the uh, bottom part of the Barakar shells. But at the top part of the Barakar shells, yes, this has the prospect. Total organic content is also good. And uh, this, and but uh, uh, these are com uh, comparatively ductile in nature than the barren measure shells. 
then and thank you sir for your question uh, then Srinmoy Maitri, thank you for your question. As of now, GLER are leading CBM producers in Ranigan's Bale. Although they have got approval of shale gas exploration, what is the current situation of shale gas ENP in particular Bale? If you can enlighten your regarding further more shale gas exploration raises alarm regarding the environmental and social concern. So what uh, various steps can be taken to reduce this? So, uh, so all of you know there is environmental concern, but uh, uh, so that challenge is always there. Uh, so we should work on that so drilling fluid designing, uh, like uh, environmental friendly drilling fluid uh, designing, then uh, water dispo treatment, uh, that part you have to take care. And as you are asking about the current scenario, uh, as for my knowledge, uh, already SR has received some environmental clearance for shale gas as far my knowledge only there are some distribution problem and so i don't uh, knowledge detail knowledge or so as far my knowledge uh, now they have received environmental clearance also for shale gas exploration and i think uh, now the industries which are having the cbm blocks they will go for shale gas exploration So are there any industries familiar for shale gas in India? Uh, yeah, the first uh, shale gas uh, pilot project uh, was carried out in uh, Ranigan's field uh, by ONGC. Then in Kambay Basin also, uh, it was carried out in, uh, pilot project was carried out by ONGC. And uh, now SR oil, that is uh, SR is also planning for shale gas exploration. Then other question is, what are other unconventional method? What are other unconventional methods? Uh, there are lots of unconventional methods. So this, uh, what I discussed here, this is mainly geochemical method and I'm trying to show you integrate some methods which are relevant, which can be re relate with uh, unconventional parameters. So there are uh, advanced logs like NMR, uh, then uh, FMI logs for uh, fracture analysis. Then for micro to nanopore analysis, you can use laboratory techniques like transmission electron microscopy, uh, then uh, F, uh, FIV scanning electron microscopy. So these are the advanced techniques which can be used for um, shale gas exploration. And for nowadays research are going, going on for hydrofracturing fluid design, uh, environmental friendly and cost effective hydrofracturing fluid design. Okay, you can work on this. And based on that, uh, you can get, uh, you can overcome the uh, challenges. Then other question is, what can be the reason that it has not been produced commercially in India? Uh, actually, this is all depend on policies, uh, government policies. Earlier, there was no uh, you know, permission. Now it has uh, uh, permission and their uh, industries should get the environmental clearance. Uh, then uh, I think near future, there will be shale gas production in India. Then another question is in microcomputer tomography, which type of pore space will indicate good micro reserve for shale gas? Okay, so we require connected pores. Yeah, yeah, that microcomputer tomography, I have shown the network, network, uh, pore network. So we should identify what is the orientation and uh, suppose we are analyzing three phases, three shale phases, silty phases, carbonaceous phases. So based on the microcomputer tomography, you can analyze what, which phases you can get uh, networking of pores, where you have effective pores, where you have microfractures. So that uh, when you will do hydrofracturing, it can, uh, it can get more sweep efficiency. Hydrocarbon will get more sweep efficiency too. Um, and flow towards the well. Uh, yes, uh, 
in India there is lack of sequence stratigraphy has been done. Sequence stratigraphy, uh, this another question is sequence stratigraphy being the important tool of basin analysis. What do you think about this? Will it become a great interest in future for hydrocarbon exploring? Yes, uh, yes, sequence stratigraphy we should do. Yeah, but there are lots of basins where sequence stratigraphy study is carried out, but uh, correlating the shales, that is, I guess, exploration, this is a uh, lake, uh, lake of sequence stratigraphic studies. Yes, in future, uh, we can do. For Cambay shales, sequence stratigraphy, and for uh, Krishna Godavari basins, uh, these basins, sequence stratigraphy study can be carried out. And I cannot see more question right now, I think there is not much more question. Excuse me, Dr. Vora, can I ask a question? Yes, definitely, sir. Uh, this uh, geochemical studies of uh, uh, surface samples have been taken, and because uh, due to the seepage of the oil or gas. Uh, but in this case, is it, will it be possible because there is a less chances of leakage or seepage uh, till the, at the surface? So the studies of the surface soil samples will give an indication of this type of uh, oil or gas in case of this shale gas or oil reservoir. Uh -huh. Okay. So uh, can, may I know you are talking about which area, which field? No, for uh, uh, conventional reservoir for uh, this uh, uh, surface samples uh, studies have been taken. Okay. Soil surface samples. soil samples. Okay, okay. Surface so soil have, samples for geochemical okay. studies. Yes, so you have done geochemical studies, stress element analysis, I think isotope analysis. Uh, right, what type of study you have carried yeah. out, stress element analysis? Uh, maybe that because uh, uh, the chemists have done it. So, okay. um, uh, the presence of the hydrocarbons due to the leakage and seepage, this okay. geochemical yeah. studies have been carried out. Yes, yes. Uh, generally, uh, due to the, um, if there are some macro seepage, if there are some hydrocarbon accumulation under the subsurface, there is possibility of sometimes macro seepage and there is possibility of micro seepage. And those seepage you can uh, analyze using trace element analysis, uh, using isotope analysis, you can analyze there. Uh, uh, so your question is, is they uh, indicate hydrocarbon prospect under the subsurface, right? Yes, it indicate that there, uh, there may be the prospect of hydrocarbon under the subsurface. But that hydrocarbon is coming from uh, shale reservoir, unconventional reservoir, or it is coming from conventional. That answer you can get if you integrate the seismic section along with the trace element anomaly. You can create trace element anomaly map. Suppose you have uh, you have to analyze 100 square kilometer area, then you have to create the proper grid like one uh, square kilometer grid space. If spacing is less, then the result will be more accurate. So you can create grid for one square kilometer. Then you have to collect the soil samples, maybe from two feet depth. And if you want to do microbial analysis, then you have to collect from one feet depth. So if you collect those samples and if you analyze the trace elements, um, uh, nickel, vanadium, uranium, thorium. So uh, if there are some micro seepage, then you can see anomalies in the contour map. You can see the anomalous zone. Okay, generally you will get less concentration of the trace element. But if there is micro seepage, you will get concentration, high concentration of those trace element anomaly. So particular desk, that location uh, indicates that there is possibility of hydrocarbon accumulation in the subsurface. Generally for frontier basins where there is not uh, much hydrocarbon exploration is carried out or there is no well, generally for the frontier basin, this type of studies are carried out to minimize, to, uh, minimize the exploration cost. If there is no CPS, that indicates that there is less possibility of uh, chance. Uh, then, but you cannot identify that this hydrocarbon is coming from just below that surface or it is coming from somewhere else. Because if there is some fault, so it can come from, it can, it, uh, can come from a long distance. If there is uh, just uh, below the uh, micro CPS is just below, there is subsurface accumulation, then you can get some 
uh, hollows type of anomalies in the trace element map. But uh, to get confirmation from where it is coming, if there is any gas chimney, everything you will get information if you correlate seismic section along with those stress element map. So you have to put the stress element map, uh, then you have to integrate the seismic sections, particularly that area, so that uh, you can uh, analyze the fractures and falls. So you can get information from where this stress, uh, this CPSs are coming. Because sometimes due to biogenic gases also, shallow level biogenic gases also, you may get some uh, anomalous concentration. And you can do isotopic analysis. Based on isotope analysis, you will get information that these are biogenic gas or these are thermogenic. So if these are thermogenic, then you should go for um, seismic integration. So you can get information how, how long, uh, what uh, distance they are traveling. It is coming from shale layer or if it, it is coming from any accumulation where there is no entrapment. I hope you got my answer. Uh, yes, thank you, doctor. Thank you. Yeah. Actually, we have carried out uh, and we are also working on uh, that surface geochemical prospecting. Uh, because I know some of the chemists, they have got, they have been awarded this uh, PhD degree based on their uh, geochemical studies of the surface samples. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. So I would like to know if there's another question or comment in order to to conclude the 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 lecture. Uh, I would like to know about the uh, feedback form with the uh, via email. I have your your emails, and um, I'm going to to request the, the feedback information in order to send you the certificate of participation related to this conference. So um, let's wait if there's another questions and well, we can conclude the, the lecture. And thank you very much. Thank you, Grevel. Thank you all the participants. And I can see uh, here students, industry professionals are also joining here. And this is also very encouraging. And uh, then students can uh, take up some projects, some research, uh, research on this, not only on unconventional, but they can utilize, they can apply these techniques for conventional also. Yes, it is, it's true. Uh, well, um, thank you so much. Uh, I think, uh, okay, there are some comments. Sorry, Johnny Poran, a colleague from AAPG. Excellent presentation, thank you very much. Um, some, uh, Mrs. Bora, some, some participants uh, are telling me if it is possible to, to send in them the, the presentation. With, uh, the, yes, yes, the PowerPoint I'll share. or PDF. Yes, I'll share with uh, the organizer and you can send to the participants. Yes, what we can do is, for example, I can uh, support you with the emails and with the, all the participants that attended to this conference because, well, uh, the, the, the peak was, uh, I think, uh, 45 participants. So uh, I, I really, I really think, thanks all the participants here that stay in the in the q a session uh, around uh, 40 people and right now 33 uh, thank you so much i will be sending you the the google form and uh, after that after you respond uh, i will send you the certificate of participation uh, i think uh, yes yeah, so actually we have uh, here some experts also, industry professionals also. So I would like to know if someone can uh, speak something. So if someone is interested to speak something, uh, want to, so yeah, one or two minutes they can suggest, they can give their suggestion also. <laughs> yes. If someone is interested. <laughs> but 
um, so um, I think we, we can conclude, uh, Mrs. Bora. Uh, once again, I want to thank you for your support, for your time, for your commitment in order to, to develop this great lecture, this great technical lecture about uh, your chemical techniques. And well, I want to invite you uh, in, in Venezuela, we are going, we are going to present a, a, a journey, um, a two weeks event about um, your chemistry in, with the Central University of Venezuela and some organizations such as the AAPG, the, um, the ICT, the, the Association of Geochemi Geochemistry Students and the uh, Young Professionals AAPG Venezuela chapter. So I want to invite you to get involved in, in geochemistry, in geochemical techniques, in order to well, uh, keep developing this, this knowledge and strengthening the knowledge about uh, geochemical techniques in exploration, because well, the, the unconventional um, reservoirs, I think, uh, together with the, for example, <laughs> uh, maybe the energy, uh, the, sustain, the sustainability of energy, it is a subject, but the unconventional reservoir uh, uh, topic exp in exploration is another subject in order to improve the um, that network that um, work in the energy sector oil and gas industry so uh, thank you for your support uh, mrs Bora, and well I'm, I'm really grateful with you thank you very much and thank you so much all the participants yes thank you so much well uh have a great evening. Uh, good night, everyone from India, and good almost good afternoon in in Venezuela. <laughs> See you soon. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Gracias. Un placer.